Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I'm talking about seven simple strategies for less stress in life. In episode 941, I talked about how less stress could help our body heal. So today I want to share some reminders on how to reduce your stress. It's one thing to say, yeah, just be a little less stressed. Hey, relax. But how do we do that? Where do we do it? And sometimes just thinking about it causes more stress. So let's just get into some of the reminders that can help us to reduce our stress in regular daily life. Because sometimes it's not the big stressors in life that are draining our ability to enjoy life. It can be the little everyday straws on the camel's back type stressors that create anxiety. You'll never experience a time in your life when everything is perfect. But having too many things wrong all at once can seriously impede your ability to smile and feel the joy in life. That's okay. These times too do pass. But we need to do the little things that we can to reduce our stress, the things that are within our own control. Because allowing these little stressors to accumulate is something that most people do. It's very common. These little stressors can seem like too much of a hassle to address at the moment. So we just let it be there. We put it off until another day and we do that over and over. And this can be a mistake in the long run. Many of these little stressors are chronic from being put off for days, weeks, or even years. They might be small, but we're forced to deal with them day after day. So here are seven simple, yet I think effective ideas to manage these little stressors in life each day. The first one that I want you to consider is becoming more organized. And by that, I mean, try reducing the clutter. This can really reduce a load on your mind. Handling the little things leaves more internal resources for handling the bigger things. Get started small and eat that clutter elephant one bite at a time. We think the clutter is not bothering us, but we carry it around with us. Now, there are different kinds of clutter, and some people do okay with like their messy desk. They know where everything is. That's fine. You have your own system, and I get that. But you know the clutter that's bothering you. The thing, it irritates you, but you don't have time to address it. So you let it go one day, then another day, and you carry that around with you. So see if there's somewhere that you can become just a little bit more organized and reduce a little bit of clutter. The next one is I want you to make a list of all the things that you need to accomplish. Many of these things are going to be the little things that I mentioned in the previous point. These are things like maybe bills that need to be paid, phone calls that need to be made, appointments that need to be made, and you keep putting it from one list to the next list and it just keeps going and the list keeps getting longer. Maybe it's an oil change for the car or, like I said, an appointment with the dentist. And we have these things hanging over our heads. These left undone are still carried around with us mentally. 
not just when we are looking at our to-do list, they're stuck in the back of our head. They may seem minor, but they weigh on us 24 hours a day. So start taking care of these little things and avoid allowing them to pile up. This can make a huge difference just getting these little nagging things off of your list. The third thing is make a list of things in your life that annoy you. So the last one was things we need to accomplish. This one is what are some of things in your life that annoy you? Is it the squeaky front door to your house or the dome light in your car that doesn't function or a wobbly chair at work? the glare on your TV screen from the window. I am telling you, it's amazing how you may be smiling at how these are so little and what difference do they make? But they hang around us. We carry them. They bother us today. They bother us again tomorrow and the next day. And I know that in my life, I've many times had the squeaky door. And let me tell you, when I didn't fix it, but my son did. It was a wonderful thing that he noticed my squeaky door and he just took care of it. And I had been having that go on for a whole year in this place. Once it was gone, I noticed that it was gone and it was like delightful. So if I noticed that a squeak was gone, I definitely noticed that it was there every single time I opened that door. And I noticed it because it bothered me. So when it was gone, it was like the angels were singing. These things can be taken care of, and then we don't have to carry them around with us anymore. So this is a list to set you free. These little things that get on our nerves over and over, they create stress. Now, you know that all stress isn't bad, right? Like there's the stress of going to Disney World. That's exciting. And it's also stressful. There's the stress of a wedding. It's delightful, exciting, but it's also stressful. So stress doesn't have to be all bad and it doesn't have to be big. It can be small and it can be from things that we enjoy or things that are annoying us. So Make that list of things in your life that annoy you and make a plan to address these issues and get them out of your life once and for all. Why suffer over and over every day? Number four is I want you to avoid procrastination. Well, this is one that I'm talking to myself here because I tend to procrastinate here and there. Once I get going, once I get the ball rolling, all is well, and I can keep going for a long time. But moving from one project to the other, I often procrastinate. How about you? Maybe you could get started on things when you still have plenty of time to do them and at a comfortable pace and do them well, instead of waiting until the last minute and having to act like the house is on fire to get everything done. Just Do it when you have the energy and there's still enough time to get it all done. Because the alternative is to wait until we're under a lot of time pressure and we don't have enough time to do it or to do it well, and then add pressure to an already stressful situation. It feels uncomfortable. Now, sometimes we work well under pressure. And if you're one of those people, that's okay. Just notice if it's causing you stress that is really irksome or bothering you, because then it could be procrastination, that you are just putting things off way too long. And it's not just a little bit of time pressure, but it's procrastination and uncomfortable. No need for us to do that to ourselves. Change your schedule around if you need to, or do your tasks at a different time. That can be the fun part of this is experimenting with, I'll use myself as an example. I've had to change recording times to see if I could do it with less time pressure on me and less procrastination. 
and it really does work. So if you found you're in a situation where there's this one thing you have to do every week and it's really causing you a lot of stress, try rearranging your schedule so that you're doing it at a different time, perhaps a time when you have more energy or when there is less time pressure. Number five is I want you to schedule time to relax. It's so important to use that kind of time, our scheduled relaxation time, to do something that is relaxing and revitalizing to you. It may not be to your kids or to your partner, but if it's relaxing and revitalizing to you, I want you to find a time to do that. Schedule time in your day for activities that you find calm you and relax you. You might find you want to take a nap. Some people do great with naps. Meditate. I hope that you are finding time to meditate. For reading a good book. For going for a walk. Listening to music. Doing some stretches. Maybe doing the body scan that's on our website. Something that makes you smile. And I want you to plan this time because if we don't schedule it, it doesn't happen. Isn't it amazing how we can schedule all kinds of things in our calendars, in our day? All kinds of things that we can make sure we get to it. It's on the calendar but we don't always schedule time for ourselves. Now, what I find works a lot with clients is having time every day. Maybe you're still at your desk, in your cubicle, in front of your computer, whatever, but you are taking a few moments to yourself. And if you keep it short, you can do this multiple times a day. Maybe you are doing some chair stretches. There's all kinds of stretching that you can do in your chair. You don't have to get up and go out the door and go for a walk. You could do some stretches in your chair. You could do a little mini meditation. You could find something to look at on your desk or the screen that is pleasing and take three breaths. Three breaths don't take much time at all, less than a minute. And I know of all the things that are on your calendar, please give yourself a minute a few times a day. And as you are taking those breaths, conscious, aware breaths, mindful breaths, let your muscles relax on the exhale. It's a great way to let go of what we've already been storing for the first hour or two of work. If you could do that three or four times a day while you're working, it will give you more energy to keep you going throughout the rest of the day. So maybe you get more done. Maybe you'll be less apt to procrastinate. Maybe you can get some of those things chopped off your list that annoy you (laughs) that we talked about earlier. Just Give yourself the break. We think we're doing a good job if we keep going. Let me just push through. Let me do just a little bit more. I have this too. I think I can just do one more, one more. No. When we start to get tired or we start to get stressed by having too many of those little straws on the camel's back, we don't work as efficiently anymore. Maybe we're no longer effective with our communication and work or with our family. So if it means we have to take a minute out to be mindful of a few breaths in our muscles, and then we can come back slightly refreshed, it saves us a lot of time in the long run. It really does. And I hope you'll experiment with it and let me know how you do. The sixth idea I have for you is I want you to evaluate your relationships. This is a place where a lot of people carry stress around. Think about your family, your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers. Think about which of those relationships could use a little fine tuning. 
which relationships need a complete overhaul and which should be dropped altogether. Relationships are not always forever. That's okay. That isn't a bad thing. Sometimes they're for a season. And sometimes we try to carry everybody along with us our entire life that we have ever met. And that may be causing you some stress. Or maybe you just need to lighten up on a relationship with perhaps a neighbor or a coworker. Think about your, maybe you need to deepen some relationships in your family or with friends. But be honest, find what needs tweaking. Maybe everything's fine. Relationships are not an issue for everybody. But it's a good place to take a look and see how you could have a little less stress there. And number seven is to take a look at your job. We spend most of our waking hours during the week at our work, our career, our job, our business, whatever you want to call it. And if you are a stay-at-home parent, that's your current job. Believe me, that is full-time work. So it can be a major source of stress. And we spend so much time there. There's a lot of little straws that can be building up each day. Maybe it's time to put your resume out there or to look for another position within the company you work for. Maybe it's time to set boundaries or ask for what you need in your daily workplace environment. Maybe you need to have a conversation with the whole family. If you are the full-time stay-at-home parent, it's time to get more people on board, set stronger boundaries. Maybe it is time to retire. Maybe it is time to get more work if finances aren't enough with your current job and you want to take a side gig or start a business. Take a look at what you are doing. Most of your waking hours during the week in your career or your job and see where some stress might be building. Little stresses maybe, but building just the same. Even if you're fortunate enough not to have any major stressors in your life at the moment, these little stressors can take their toll. Manage these chronic stressors and you'll find that the quality of your life can increase greatly. Take steps to reduce the everyday stresses in your life. I hope today's show was helpful for you and I look forward to hearing from you if you have anything you'd like us to be addressing here on the show, Anxiety Coaches Podcast at gmail.com. And now for today's quote. You don't have to see the whole staircase. Just take the first step. And that's from Martin Luther King. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at the anxietycoachespodcast.com.